guys, it's Alexis, aka The Soth Reader, and I'm here today to do another monthly recommendations video. Monthly Recommendations is a Goodreads group hosted by Trina at Between Chapters and Kayla Rain, um, which I will of course leave the link to down below. Um, I have thoroughly enjoyed being part of this group since I first joined back in August, I want to say. Um, so this week's topic is con your favorite contemporaries. I will say these are all YA contemporaries, so YA stories that all take place um, in the contemporary setting. Um, and she kind of, when they had posted the, the topic for this month, they had kind of mentioned that contemporaries can actually cover a wide variety of genres such as literary fiction, horror, thrillers, all of those. Mine I limited to YA contemporary. And the reason being that I actually was going to film a video in April all about my YA, favorite YA contemporaries, um, and then I saw that this was the topic for May, so I just went, okay, I'll shelve it for the next month. So I basically just transferred over the list I was already going to make. So these are the top eight YA contemporaries that I have read that I would absolutely recommend to you. The first one I'm going to mention is I'll Give You the Sun by Janie Nelson. This is a very popular book, but there are still a lot of people who haven't read it yet. Um, this basically tells the story of two twins, Jude and Noah. Noah's half of the story takes place when they are 13, and Jude's story takes place when they're 16, and it goes back and forth. And some incident has occurred in between these three years. Noah's story kind of builds up to these incidents, and then Jude's story kind of reflects on them, but they're told, you know, going back and forth, so you don't really know what's going on until towards the end of the book. I really love this book. It has a very, very flowery prose, very unique writing style. Each narrative has its own little break from the prose, um, which if you read this book you'll understand what I'm talking about. Um, but I really, really loved both no Noah and Jude as main characters. I definitely connected with both of them. Um, both of their stories are beautiful in their own right, um, because Noah's is kind of a lot about him um, being queer and kind of experiencing first love. Jude's is kind of a lot about, um, is a lot about loss in a sense, and a lot about kind of her getting her life back on track after this event that she has experienced. Um, but it's really, really a beautiful story. It's a very touching story, um, and it's a definitely the kind of story that sticks with you. The next one I'm going to mention is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This is, of course, a recent 2017 release, but I honestly can't talk about my favorite contemporaries without mentioning how much I loved this book and how much I took away from this book. Um, this, of course, follows our main character, Star, who kind of lives a dual life between um, the mostly predominantly black um, poor neighborhood that she comes from and kind of the upscale rich mostly white school that she goes to and it deals a lot with her kind of trying to be two people to be in both of those environments um, and one day she's at a party and her and her friend Khalil leave the party and they get pulled over by a white policeman and the white policeman actually shoots and kills Khalil and so the story is also a lot about Star being the main witness in this crime and about the toll it kind of takes on her emotionally and how it kind of affects every other aspect of her life. This book is inspired by the Black Lives Matter movement um, and it is um, by a southern black author, Angie Thomas, and this book is so incredible. Like there were so many parts reading this book where I, it just made me so aware of how privileged I am being white. Um, which I had hoped it would do when I picked it up. But there's also so many other things about this book I absolutely love. Um, I really, really love Star as a main character. She's a really strong main character. A lot of the content in this book made me laugh, made me angry, made me cry. Um, Star's parents are by far some of my favorite parents I've ever read about in a book. They're also my favorite characters in this story. I love that Star deals with um, a kind of toxic friendship in this story and I absolutely loved the portrayal of that. I thought it was brilliant. So I think that this book has so many things to offer and I definitely think it's a game changer in YA. The next one I'm going to mention is a recent read of mine. It's actually the first book in a series that I listened to on audiobook back in March and completely fell in love with, and that is To All the Boys I Loved Before by Jenny Han. This basically tells the story of our main character, Laura Jean, 
who writes letters to all of the boys that she's previously liked and she writes these letters and puts them away in a hat box in her closet and it's her way of like getting over these crushes that she has. And so one day, mysteriously, her letters get sent out and she basically has to confront the five boys that she's previously written letters to. There are so many things I absolutely love about this series. Some people kind of dislike the main character, Laura Jean, they think she's kind of naive. Um, for me, she felt a lot like real people I've actually known, especially people I went to high school with. Um, so in my opinion, Laura Jean is a very realistic teenager. Um, the family aspect between Laura Jean and her sisters is phenomenal. Laura Jean is half Korean and I was surprised by how much of the story actually deals a lot with her having a Korean side of her family and her still trying to follow a lot of the Korean traditions. I loved that. Um, this book also has one of my guilty pleasure tropes um, and as soon as it started I was absolutely 100% completely in love with this book and I love the relationship in this series and I think if you're looking for a very um, for a very unique YA contemporary story that actually deals, I think, with a lot of realistic teenager topics, I definitely recommend to all the boys I've loved before. The next one I'm going to mention is one of my favorite books of last year, and that is The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. I have been a fan of Nicola Yoon's both, both of her books, both this and Everything Everything, but this one by far absolutely captivated me. This tells the story of our two main characters, Daniel and Natasha. Um, Daniel is going on his way to a interview to try to get himself into Yale and Natasha is finding out that her family is being deported. And the story follows both of them on this one day as they meet and kind of just fall completely in love with each other. Um, as a romance story I don't necessarily think that this is brilliant but so much of the content in this book is just amazing. So much of what Nicola Yoon says about being an immigrant or being the son or daughter of an immigrant and what she talks a lot about being in America and like following the American dream. This book deals a lot with fate um, and the idea of like fate versus you know choosing your own destiny. Um, the way that this book is told is really unique and brilliant in my opinion. It follows Daniel and Natasha's point of view but it also follows points of views of side characters. Um, and also of um, general concepts like there's a whole chapter just on fate and there's a chapter about um, the hair industry in America which makes sense in the context of the book um, and just the way it was written is really beautiful and I just left this book just overwhelmed and thinking so much about the, a lot of the content that's covered in this book and so I think Nicola Yoon set out to do um, a very unique story and in my opinion she accomplished it. The next contemporary I'm going to mention is one I have not read in a very long time but I do need to reread it because I love the story in it so much and that is Blue Plate Special by Michelle D. Kwasny. This tells the story of three different main characters um, who are each in kind of like a different um, time period at the end of the 20th century and the beginning of the 21st century. Um, and it's kind of about these three women and their lives and it's just such a really beautiful story. There definitely are um, some trigger warnings I would like to mention for um, physical and emotional abuse, um, sexual assault, um, and a couple others that I'm blanking on right now but I'm sure that they're in there. Um, grief and loss are both in here as well. Um, but I just think so much of what happens in this book is just like you really fall in love with each of the three main characters and you fall in love with their stories and you feel their pain and you feel their happiness and a lot of this book is about these girls and the relationships they have with their mothers. That's a very very prevalent theme in this story is a lot about a girl, a daughter's relationship with her mother and how that relationship can affect um, the experiences she has later on in life and the experiences that she will pass on to her own daughters. Um, and so that's a huge part of the story um, and it's a part of the story that I absolutely loved and that I loved reading about and just it was a really beautiful story. I do need to reread it um, because it's been a while. Um, and one of the main characters also I believe her her stories are told um, in free verse 
don't quote me on that, but I believe so. So if that would be something you're interested in, I highly, highly recommend Blue Paid Special by Michelle D. Guazny. The next one I'm going to mention is Every Last Word by Tamara Ireland Stone. This book is about our main character, Sam, who has OCD, and she's basically trying to keep her OCD from her friends at school. And one day she basically discovers like a spoken word, uh, like a secret poetry corner that's at her school. And she basically is like never felt as free or as part of a community as she does with them. So it's kind of about her discovering who she is as a person through this introduction to poetry. I loved this book so much. I don't have OCD personally, but I do have anxiety. And a l I definitely related to Sam when she gets very anxious because of her OCD. I definitely connected to that. Um, Sam's a swimmer, which I definitely connected to because I swam um, competitively myself, so I loved that. Um, Sam kind of has a group of friends that aren't always the nicest group of people, um, and that was something I definitely related to in Sam's narrative. Um, there's also, like, just the poetry in the book I actually find really beautiful, and a lot of it is, some of it's funny, some of it's heartbreaking, but I think it's really interesting that that was woven into the story. Um, just overall, I really, really love this book. Um, it's not own voices for the OCD. Um, but Tamara Ireland Stone actually got all of her OCD information from uh, a friend's daughter she knows that has OCD. Um, I can't speak on the rep, obviously, just to give you a little bit of information about where Tamara Ireland Stone got her information. Um, but it really is a, a beautiful novel in my opinion, and I absolutely love it. The next one I'm going to mention is um, another LGBTQIA plus story that I absolutely adore, and that is Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertelli. This is follows our main character, Simon, who is gay, but he's still in the closet, and it's basically about he's been having an online relationship with a guy at his school named Blue, who he doesn't know the true identity of. And one day, he leaves his emails open on a school computer, and this classmate of his, Martin, tries to blackmail Simon um, into helping Martin get a date with Simon's friend, Abby. Um, <laughs> there's so much about this book to absolutely love. Becky Albertelli does an amazing job at writing realistic teenagers. Um, Simon is a bit of a nerd. He really loves Harry Potter and theater. Um, and so a lot of those things are very relatable because it feels like a realistic person. Um, I love the relationship between Simon and his friends and Simon and his family. They're all very prevalent to the story and I loved that. Um, the relationship between Simon and Blue is the cutest thing imaginable. It's so adorable. Like you'll catch yourself smiling from ear to ear and you'll just be like, I can't. Um, it's so adorable. The, the characters are just really, really memorable and they're really fantastic to read about. Um, and it's definitely a fantastic debut from Becky Albertelli, and I highly, highly recommend it. The last one I'm going to mention is another one that is kind of personal to me, just because of how much I absolutely connect with the main character, and that is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. This tells the story of our, fresh, our college freshman, Kath, who has severe anxiety that makes her, you know, really hard for her to interact with people, and she's in her first semester of college. And so she kind of is dealing with the situation where she still wants to be the person she was in high school, where she ran like a super popular fan fiction story based on this like Harry Potter-esque type story called Simon Snow. Um, and she basically became pretty internet famous for her fan fiction over Simon Snow, while also kind of realizing that she has a lot of growing up to do in college. Um, this book is a lot about Kath and her twin sister Ren and kind of the relationship between them and how it differs a lot when they both go to college. It's a lot about her father and her mother. Both aspects I really really loved in the story but this deals a lot with Kath and her anxiety as well and just a lot about how her anxiety is so limiting to her life and how she really honestly can't do things because of how anxious they make her. Um, and of course there is a super cute barista boy that she falls in love with, Levi, who I 100% uh, absolutely adore. But like, so much of Kath just being like, I don't want to go out, I just want to stay in, mimicked my freshman year of college so 
much. So like I definitely think this is a great book for people who are just entering college because this book is a lot about Cass college experience or freshman year. It talks a lot about classes and kind of the college lifestyle and I actually found it to be very realistic um, and just talking about like the teacher she and I just I found it to be very realistic for me it was scary realistic how much it reminded me of my own freshman year of college but it honestly just made me love this book two bits alright guys so that was my monthly recommendations topic for my favorite YA contemporaries um, I definitely love contemporary. It's not a genre I can read solidly back to back, but I definitely get in these moods where I just want to devour every contemporary book I can get my hands on. I would love to hear you guys' recommendations for contemporaries, YA or not, and I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye!